Building math doesn't have to be difficult. In fact, I'm gonna show you the only eight dumbbell exercises you need to build math fast. Hey, what's up guys? Gary Walker here with walkerfitmuscle.com. All right, building mass can get overcomplicated, okay? You can keep things simple and still build a lot of mass. However, there's so many different programs out there, so many different methodologies out there that it's easy to get frustrated and confused about what to do to build mass. Basically, what you need to do is focus on multi-joint compound movements. That's the key to doing all of this, all right? In this video, I'm gonna give you eight of my favorite dumbbell exercises. Dumbbell exercises that you can do at home, at the gym, anywhere you have access to dumbbells, okay? Here's the thing, when you're focusing on building mass, that's different from building strength. So that's the first thing you need to focus on. Make sure you're working in the hypertrophy rep range. Typically eight to 12 reps for a lot of these multi-joint exercises. And the multi-joint exercises are gonna be your biggest bang for your buck exercises. Not only are they gonna help build more muscle, but they're gonna help generate more testosterone in your body, more growth hormone in your body, help pick up your metabolism, so you're gonna be burning fat simultaneously. So you're gonna get tremendous benefits. Before I get into the exercises though, I do wanna say you've got to make sure you're eating in a caloric surplus. Basically, eat more food than your body's expending every day. If you don't do that, you're not gonna gain mass regardless of the exercises, regardless of the program you're following, all right? That being said, one last thing, if you need guidance, I'm gonna give you exercises, all right? However, the key to building muscle is following a progressive program, something designed to help you build muscle. If you need guidance, you need a plan, I'm offering my one-on-one -on -one training. It's got an app that makes everything simple, videos that show you how to do all these exercises, and it's structured to where every four weeks you're gonna get a different fitness plan, different resistance training program to help you stay motivated and encouraged to continue to move on and to help you with your progression because you have to have progressions within the workout plan. Also meal plan, something that's gonna make sure and assure that you are following a caloric surplus, which is the key to building mass, all right? That being said, let's get started with these exercises. First one I'm gonna show you guys is a dumbbell squat. Typically, I always like squats. You need to do some type of squat. Dumbbell squat can be a goblet squat, a heels elevated dumbbell squat. All right, for this video, I'm demonstrating a standard dumbbell squat. Basically, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you're doing the, you're breaking at the hips first. It's a hip hinge. Getting your glutes back towards the wall behind you. Once you initiate that hip hinge, then you go into your descent. And when it comes to a squat, basically go as deep as you can comfortably go. Not everybody can go ass to grass, all right? If you can and you have no lower back issues, then by all means go ass to grass on every single rep. If you can only get to parallel, parallel is gonna be fine. You're still gonna get really good results from these dumbbell squats. Basically, keep your core tight, stay slow and under control within these reps. I do like explosive concentrics, meaning take your time lowering the weight, lower three to four seconds, every lowering phase, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Immediately, once you get to the bottom, then explode back to the top. Really focus on driving with your glutes and with your quads. Keep your core tight when you're doing that. All right, so that's gonna be the first exercise. Another exercise that I really love, it's gonna help work that posterior chain, your hamstrings and your glutes, your lower back. It is a dumbbell RDL or Romanian deadlifts. I like Romanian deadlifts. They're standard deadlifts that you can do. However, the move, movement is so similar to a squat. So if you're incorporating squats into your dumbbell training, then it's okay to omit the standard dumbbell deadlift and Go ahead and just utilize the RDLs, all right? Romanian deadlifts. Basically, same situation, you're going to have that same hip hinge movement. Break at the hips. Keep the dumbbells as close to your body as possible. I like to ride the dumbbells down my legs, all right? And basically, you're not just bending over when you're doing this. I see a lot of people just bend over as if you're trying to stretch, you're trying to touch your toes. 
All right, you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna round that upper back. Actually keep your core tight, keep your shoulders back, chest out, and then basically just take that hip hinge as far as you can go back. Get those glutes back and ride the dumbbells down as far as you can go. Feel the stretch in your hamstrings. The stretch should be hamstrings. Once you get as deep as you can comfortably go, then bring that weight back up. Focus on contracting the hamstrings to initiate the movement on the way back up. Once you get to the top, I want you to clench your glutes. Really hammer those glutes at the top. That's gonna help develop that overall posterior chain. Like I said, you're getting those hamstrings worked, the glutes worked, and even that lower back. So nice and slow and under control with this as well. All right, another great exercise. Now we're gonna get into a chest exercise. So I'm gonna say the dumbbell bench press. I'm gonna be demonstrating a dumbbell bench press. However, you can utilize a dumbbell incline press and that's fine. But basically for the demonstration purposes, I'm doing a standard bench press. The key points here, keep your core tight. I like keeping my core tight when I'm doing all movements. All right, keep that core tight, keep that spine stabilized. And I go ahead and depress my shoulders. Squeeze your shoulder blades together at the top. Once you get the dumbbells up, squeeze those shoulder blades together and depress them. That's gonna help keep your shoulder joints safe. From that position, same similar situation, go as deep as you can comfortably go. All right, if that's breaking 90 degrees with your elbows, then that's fine. If you can go deeper by stretching your chest, take it deeper, go as deep as you can comfortably go. However, if anything deeper than that 90 degrees is actually stressing out your shoulder joints, then don't go that deep, all right? I want you to do a full range of motion, but within your full range. We all are working with different mobilities in our shoulders. So go as deep as you can comfortably go, Nice little pause there and then bring that weight back up. Here's the key, when you're bringing the weight back up, really focus on that mind-muscle connection and bring the weight up by contracting your chest, all right? Once you get towards the top with the dumbbells, a good mental cue to have is trying to bring those biceps together. You don't actually wanna touch the biceps, obviously, but at the top, the mental image is you're bringing the biceps and you're bringing them as close together as possible, that's gonna help give you a really good peak contraction in your pecs, which is what you wanna do at the top of every single rep. All right, now that we've gotten a chest exercise, I'm gonna give you a back exercise, mass for the back. All right, and I like the dumbbell row. Here's one thing you can do. A Couple different movements I like when doing the bent over dumbbell row. Basically, hip hinge as well. Don't just bend over. Anytime you're just bending over with weight, that's putting a lot of stress on your lumbar spine. I want you to get away from just bending over. Protect your lower back, all right? So hip hinge, and then I don't like a straight flat back. You'll notice the angle I'm utilizing for my reps. I really like that. It allows for really good back support while I'm doing the back rows. Here's the key when you're doing a back row though. The key to doing a back row is driving the weights up, initiating the movements with the elbows, all right? So imagine someone having a string attached to your elbows and just like a puppet, they're pulling those elbows up. That's the mental cue I want you to have. Someone is pulling those elbows up. That's what I want you to do and squeeze those lats together. Get those elbows up as high as possible. Squeeze those lats together as hard as possible, all right? And then once up there, hold the contraction for about two seconds, thousand one, thousand two, and then bring the weight down into a full stretch position. Two key points here. One, definitely initiate with the elbows and make sure the elbows are the drivers within the movement. Two is hand position. Neutral grip, basically meaning your palms are facing each other. I like the neutral grip when you're doing these or a supinated grip. So basically at the bottom, palms away from your body. Both of those movements are gonna create some external rotation in the shoulders, all right, in the humerus. So it's gonna give you more clearance in the shoulder joints. So it's a safer movement for your shoulders. You're still gonna get a great peak contraction. So utilize either one of those grips. Don't use the pronated grip as if you're doing a barbell row, all right? Barbell row is a straight up pronated grip, meaning palms are towards your body. And that's fine for some people, but I want you to be safe. I want you to protect your joints. So that's why we're gonna go with the neutral or the supinated grip. All right, got the back dumbbell exercise. Now we're gonna go into a shoulder press. I like the dumbbell shoulder press. 
Two different variations that you can utilize here. If you've got really strong shoulders or you really wanna emphasize building bigger shoulders, one thing you can do is incorporate a push press, all right? However, when you're doing a shoulder press, you can either do it seated, which is gonna help stabilize that spine again, give you some lower back support. If you've got a strong core already, do these standing, all right? And if you're doing them nice, slow, and under control, basically, anytime I'm doing a lift portion of the movement, I like to do it explosively, all right? The concentric contraction. Lift it quickly and explosively. But the eccentric part, the lowering of the weight, take that under control three to four seconds all right really feel the weight on the way down in those shoulders mind muscle connection here as well really make sure the shoulders are doing all of the work all right now going back to the push press if you're doing controlled slow movements obviously you can't go very heavy if you're wanting to extremely overload the shoulders again emphasize building bigger shoulders then I always recommend the push press. So basically all you're gonna do is take a heavier dumbbell, all right? A dumbbell that's slightly too heavy for you to lift strictly. This is where you're gonna initiate some momentum. You're gonna bend your knees and you're gonna use your hips and knees to help push the weight up. The goal with these push presses, you wanna just get the weight up. Even if you're using a little cheat movement, a little momentum, that's okay because you're gonna control that three to four second eccentric with extremely heavy weight. That's where the growth is gonna come from, that negative portion of the movement. So that's gonna be a great exercise for you guys that's really wanting to focus on creating bigger shoulders, not just shapely shoulders. If you're going for an aesthetic look, a sexy look, then just go for shape and you can do some strict form presses that you see me doing in the video, all right? But if you're wanting those big, bolder shoulders, man, then add some extra overload, some extra weight. All right, here's another exercise that we're gonna go into. This one's actually more upper back traps, a lot of posterior work here. It's a hanging clean utilizing dumbbells, all right? Similar to a power clean. A power clean you're doing completely off the floor. That's the difference. This one you're doing it from a straight arm hang position, all right? You're just gonna have the weight hanging and go ahead and bend those knees slightly, initiate the movement with some momentum, some hip work, all right? Get a little hip hinge going and initiate a little cheating motion. That's okay. All right, the main thing you wanna do is keep the dumbbells close to your body. Don't bring them all the way out in front of your body. Keep them close to your body and you'll notice at the top, I like to rotate my wrist slightly, more of a neutral grip, all right? Palms facing one another slightly as opposed to palms facing away from your body because anytime you're doing that pronated grip, it's gonna place a little bit more stress on your shoulders. And the hanging clean is designed to be a little bit of a heavier movement. A heavy movement is gonna to place too much stress on your shoulders if you're doing a pronated grip. So that's why you'll notice me really initiating the movement with my hips, throwing that weight up there, getting those traps. It's basically a shrug, and then you're bringing it into a clean position. Right, rest it right there up on your shoulders, okay? Keep the core tight when you're doing these as well to protect your lumbar spine. I'm gonna keep preaching and harping on that. Protect that lower back. All right, now we're gonna get into one of my favorite bicep exercises. I've got several bicep exercises that I like. However, I'm gonna give you the Zotman curl because if you're choosing one bicep exercise, this one once again will give you more bang for your buck. All right, because you're gonna actually be working your forearms as well. Basically what you're doing is starting with a supinated position, palms away from you, and you are bringing the weight up in a strict form, meaning shoulders should be back. Don't round the shoulders forward. That's cheating, that's gonna place your shoulders again in a disadvantaged position, but it's also limiting the range of motion. Keep the shoulders back, keep that chest out, keep those elbows pinned to your sides. Nice and control with the contraction on the way up. Then you're gonna rotate, which is a pronated position, meaning palms away from your body, all right? You're gonna rotate palms away and then start lowering the weight. Palms at the bottom will be actually facing your thighs. All right, that's the pronated position. Once at the bottom, rotate those things back out again, palms away, and then go straight back into another bicep curl, all right? And then once again, you're going to rotate away the bottom, the, the lowering of this exercise is where a lot of the forearm work is gonna come from. So again, this is one of the reasons I chose this exercise 
for my bicep exercise. All right, now we are dumbbell exercise number eight. The very last one I am gonna give you, one of my favorites. I keep saying that because I like a lot of these exercises. That's why I put all of these into this video. Obviously, you've got tons of dumbbell exercises. There's gonna be tons of multi-joint compound exercises that you can do, all right? The main thing you'll notice is I'm doing things that are designed to really give you your biggest bang for your buck, allow you to lift a little bit of heavier weight so you can build that mass, all right? But when I say heavier weight, I don't mean so heavy that you can't get more than six reps. Typically, the eight to 12 rep range is what I want you to be focusing on on all of these. That's gonna give you the optimal time under tension as well as enough weight to really put some mass on your body. All right, man. Last one you're gonna be doing is a close grip tricep press, all right? You heard, if, if you're doing a standard bench press, it's like a close grip bench press. Basically, a similar situation. However, when you're doing it with dumbbells, I like to call it a tricep press, close grip tricep press. Key point when you're doing these, keep your elbows rotated in, all right? Not flared out, rotate them in, keep the dumbbells close together. Again, this is close grip. So when you're doing these, palms should almost be facing one another. They're out slightly, but almost facing one another, okay? That's gonna give you more of a neutral grip. Again, safer for your shoulders. The main point here that I want to get across is the main bend should come from the elbow, all right? Meaning, if you're doing this same movement and you're bending at the shoulder like a bench press, you're gonna be placing too much emphasis on your pecs, your chest. I really want you to eliminate as much chest work as possible. The main way to do that, once you're at the top with this, then you start bending, bending, bending at the elbow, all right? At the elbow, weight should be right around chest, at the chest. From that position, that should be deep enough. If you go too much deeper, then you'll notice you're not bending at the elbow anymore, you're actually stretching your shoulder joint. You can practice this with a light weight to see what I'm talking about, all right? So again, once you're at the top, bend those elbows. Bend the elbows while you're coming down. And that is the full extension and the full stretch, actually, that you're gonna be getting in your triceps. Full stretch of your triceps, and then you're gonna extend the weight back up. You're gonna push it up by unlocking those elbows, all right? It's more of a mental image because it may not make sense to you until you actually do it. Hopefully by watching me do it, you can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. All right, but again, bench press is all shoulder. You'll know shoulder, 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 and you're pushing back up, shoulder, shoulder, shoulder. With a tricep, it's bending here, it's bending elbow, 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 elbow. Shoulder's almost still in a fixed position. From that position, then you're gonna press back up. Elbow, press, elbow, Press, bench press, shoulder stretch, and shoulder press. Hopefully that shows you what I'm talking about so you know how to do this safely, but mainly you know how to do this and pack tremendous size on your triceps because this is a great tricep builder, a tremendous mass builder. But all right, man, that's all I got for this video. I hope you like it. If you do, man, give me a thumbs up. That way I know if I know you like it, I'll feel more like it, okay? It's one of the things I'm keeping up with. Also, comment below and let me know what you think. If you got any questions about any of these exercises, anything else I touched on as far as the caloric surplus, or again, my walkerfitmuscleonline.com, okay? Go there, check out my program, and basically, it's, it's gonna be live in 10 days. So I'm not sure when you're watching this video, but basically July 7th. July 7th, 2020, I'm gonna put that date out there because that's when it's gonna be live. That's when I'm gonna offer my one-on-one -on -one training. Typically, I'm usually way too busy to do that. I've been training people for 27 years, so it's hard for me to spend time doing one-on-one -on -one training. This is an online version. I've also created an amazing app. It's gonna be the only app that offers my carb cycling. I recommend carb cycling. However, I know not everybody wants carb cycling. So I'm gonna give you whatever type of nutrition plan you want. If it's a ketogenic plan, if it's a carb cycling plan, if it fits your macros plan, just a general macro-based plan, any type of nutrition plan you want, 
I got it, I will get it for you, okay? And the workout, same thing. Let me know what your goals are. Is it straight up mass? If you wanna build mass, and I got a tremendous group of exercises, tremendous plan I will put you on. If you're wanting to lose weight, if you're wanting to transform, if you're wanting to get shredded, I've got something for all of you, all right? So it just depends on what your goals are. And I'm making it super, super inexpensive because at the end of the day, that's all I wanna do, man. I wanna get as many of you to transform your lives. Not only, you notice I didn't say bodies. I wanna help you transform your body, but also wanna help you transform mentally because that's one of the reasons I got into this in the first place. It's not just about the physical, the aesthetics, all of that, the vanity. Hey man, that's great. That's a great side effect to the mental benefits, the emotional benefits that come along with these transformations. So definitely make sure you check that out. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Also share it with your family, your buddies, and help me grow my channel. That being said, that's all I got. Get busy, get after it, and God bless.